For many of us, when we start the journey of recovery and healing, we believe this is something we can do alone. Where does this message come from? And why do we assume that this is something we can actually do by ourselves? Well, it, there, there's there's a twofold answer to this. One is that that the American culture, actually Western civilization culture right now, is a me culture. And me culture uh, has a fundamental driving force of belief that our value is based on how well we perform. And it is underneath that is a fear that if people really knew what we had thought, they really knew what we had done, they would reject us. And so, it, and so the way that we have protected ourselves in our culture, and you, we see this in, uh, uh, every time we turn on the TV, we have people who are trying to manage our image, their image of who they are. That happens in the church. You know, the, the old joke of pastors who stand up and, and talk about a conflict with his with a pastor's wife about where to squeeze a toothpaste, and that's as about as transparent as they're going to get. So, so we have a culture that, that preaches that. But the other side of it is, is this. The church has not always done a good job with healing groups. And, and, and at the very core of the healing group is uh, accountability, but, but one of the core phrases of accountability is this, it is given and not taken. But I see a lot of small groups that are quote unquote healing groups where advice is given when it's not asked for where leaders say, well, I only have a congregation of six guys, but I get to preach. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, and so they, they feel like now they get to be the person in control. And so a part of this is that we have to, to create an environment where people feel safe to start disclosing their story for some guys they'll do it right up front at the beginning of group. For some men, it may be four months in before they get truly transparent in the group because they have to build trust. And, and, and for, for us, the, uh, this idea of uh, being able to uh, be the example of openness and transparency you know, I was a fallen pastor. I came to my first group. I was so shame bound I could possibly be. And in in the very first group I attended, in the precursor to Pure Desire, which was called For Men Only, uh, the 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 pastor who was leading the ministry was my small group leader, and I was shocked because there was transparency amongst the whole group where there the people were disclosing to each other. And, it, and the ministry had only been three months old. And, and yet these men were, were so open and transparent that, that it gave me permission to start risking telling my own story. Yeah, I think you're spot on, Harry, that we live in a culture that's very kind of me-centered. And, and I think particularly addiction or struggles that we have turn us even further in on ourselves. And so we think, well, I should do this alone. And, and part of it comes out of the lie we've maybe told ourselves is, well, I, I can stop anytime I want. So then when it comes to change, we're like, well, I, I said I could stop anytime I want, and now I'm trying, and it's up to me. And, and just kind of that rugged individualism that we feel like, well, you know, I got myself here. I need to get myself out out of here and and not realizing yeah. no part of the reason you got where you are is because you were doing it by yourself but another dynamic i think that happens too is not only the question that i can do this alone i think many men and women hear the, the phrase a little differently they hear it of i should do this alone because they feel like this topic is it's too messy it's embarrassing yeah. it's too personal people don't want to hear that uh this is it's kind of my own private life and mm -hmm. i shouldn't be just bringing that to others so i should do this alone and i think particularly if we grew up in in very conservative 
you know, religious faith-based backgrounds, it's like, hey, we don't talk about that here. So the message might not be as much about I can do this on my own. It might be I should. That, that's the only way I should go do it privately, secretively, and yet again, not seeing that, that the approach to healing is actually part of the problem. Well, and part of that too, I think what Harry, you were talking about is that uh, you don't see other people doing this well. You see the example that you get is you don't ever hear about the pastor who's standing up front about his struggles. And so you assume that being a healthy Christian or being a healthy follower of Jesus or, you know, being someone who's healthy sexually means you do it on your yeah, own because you, you don't do ever. It. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I think yeah. because of that, and this is what, you know, and we'll talk about this, I'm sure of, you know, later in the episode, but that starts a shame cycle because then, oh, I'm not yes. as good as the pastor or whoever else I see. Therefore, something's wrong with me, which we know perpetuates addiction. Yeah, you know, Trevor, you're, you and Nick are, are, are right on. I, I believe in my work in, in counseling that until we deal with the shame, everything else becomes uh, rather uh, more like busy work for for our the, the people we're working with and and i'm thinking of some poor guy getting seven pillars having no exposure to to a healing community and being terrified to begin to open up that book and and you know the first place he has to be accountable is with himself you know, and, and Nick, I, I defer to you theologically, but but I believe that that uh, um, in, in the course of my life, I have never experienced Jesus taking away my free will, and and that He always, as a phrase that phrase that Ted used with me was dignity of choice. God always gives us dignity of choice, yeah. even when we're making poor decisions. <laughs> yep. But I have been in churches where your dignity of choice is tried to be taken from you. And that can happen in an unhealthy small group. And that's why I'm so thrilled that we train our leaders for all the online groups because it's so important that we have a uh, a person who is capable of, of a healthy facilitating of the group as everyone works through their own uh, difficulties and making it a safe place for some new man who's never been exposed to a healing community to, yeah. to join in. Yeah, yeah, you got to let people come to their own answers at their own pace and not just have a dictated, here's what you will do, because that, you know, that doesn't lead to lasting mm -hmm. change. So 